This is Eleanor, a Civilization VI leader who reduces enemy city loyalty through her furry fanfictions, letting her conquer cities without declaring war. And so I got to thinking, can we conquer the world without declaring any wars? I wanted this to be as hard a challenge as possible, adding in the mods of five controversial, militaristic-focused characters with the aim of helping them see the error in their ways by converting them to my cause peacefully. We have to set up as quickly as possible since the more cities we have, the more great works we can hold, increasing our loyalty reduction. Sending out the scouts where my previous blunders have their survival chances at around 2%, but they survive long enough to meet Mao and Kim Jong-un blocking expansion in the west. That's fine, as we don't need to expand right away since I'm using this time to set up for a religion to get cathedrals for more furry fanfiction slots. That may prove a fatal mistake, as without enforcing my claim, some natives with slightly darker skin had the gall to be born on the land I want. My slinger was dispatched, and did well with the ethnic elimination, until my heart dropped as a warrior spawned in without a scout. This turn of events sent my slinger into a frenzy as my heart pounded every time the warrior approached my slinger's vulnerable bussy before revealing this was all an elaborate ploy. Made to distract the barb and leave his camp wide open and primed for Goatsy, but this wasn't the end as the tribe called for assistance from up north ambushing my warrior. But with a river and impressive fortifications, he gave those back shots like a champ before the strap on was finally passed to him. But with their elimination, we've now secured the north for ourselves, giving more than enough cities, especially with cathedrals, to house all the pyrocynical bait we'll ever need. With all my cities planned, I meet the Civ that gave me the worst problem, not only in this game, but in any game I've ever played. Adolf. You see, JFD removed the Germany mod I wanted to use, so I got one from a shady website instead, and this mod was reich -diculous. I go in expecting a quick summary of his abilities, but what is that? Where are the abilities? This is just Nazi propaganda! The only thing I can tell is that he has 50 unique units, and frankly, how OP he was surprised me. I became friends with him, so there was no question us which side I was on in case he proved a threat, but I think I should be okay. I soon realized how wrong I was. But what shocked me even more than the 50 unique units was Shanghai getting settled I need to go. With the cities plotted out, I needed to spam out the settlers while also getting them to follow my religion. The capital and the ladies of the Martian Reed City were pivotal to this, plugging in Ancestral Hall when I could to increase production and get free builders for all my settlements. While I was busy settling the frontier, I needed to provide hope for these settlers venturing off into a unknown brave new world. To do that, I spread the word of the Tumblr sexy men. This religious unity gave our people the confidence needed to become vigilant pioneers our burgeoning empire needed, at least until a competing belief sprung up. While Mr. Adolf is looking expansive in his own right, I had a trump card to guarantee all this juicy land for myself. By settling this pass right here, I can lock him off until he researches navigation, but by that point, I'll have all the cities placed and stop any of his expansionist dreams. But with his yields and the Hanses he had, he could no doubt get his own settler out in that time, which would ruin my plans, and I can't have that. So it was a race to the mountain pass, turn after turn past, wondering if his red and green borders would spring up, and as I got closer, and closer, I finally realized I was racing against nobody, settling the city and securing all our future settlements. But while I won this race, Hitler outplayed me like my last name was Chamberlain and was swarming my cities with his far-right ideology. I needed to win this religious battle, and with the religious fervor of a conquistador, I set out to not only win this, but to get the golden age that would come with it. My loyal disciples set out and begun their conversions, and I was content with all seeming to be going well. That was until he launched a massive religious counterattack. The battle ensues, but with his large amount of yields, I had nowhere near the amount of faith needed to keep up. While this battle was raging, I realized my people needed something to fight for, and so I built a monument to the gods, Etamenanki, as my people 
people came to call it. But even this wasn't enough, and in a last ditch effort I built a second monument. Using my resources to secure a great bath prepping for the inevitable anime explosion coming in a few hundred years. Despite my efforts, I was left with regret as his missionaries are too much and with a heavy heart. I realized I couldn't win conceding my religion and embracing, uh, well this. But my efforts weren't completely in vain as despite losing the religious war, my monuments would prove to stand the test of time, beginning what people would call the first French Golden Age, but faith wasn't the only yield Germany was excelling at. I was left in shock looking at his massive culture schlong and I determined that I needed theater squares now with my golden age, the increase in economic development helped me jumpstart that goal by purchasing some fanfiction to get the loyalty going, but that was nowhere near enough as Adolf was just making too many great people points. I didn't know exactly how many cities he had until a little later, but alarm bells were already going off in my head at how strong he might actually be. With failure setting in, I needed to innovate, and innovate I did. You see, See, with all this land and numerous city-state allies, I had plenty of resources, so I naturally became complicit in potential war crimes by stealing and selling industrial resources to actors with dubious morals. Then selling the gold I had for requisitioned artwork. Why does this sound familiar? This neutrality was waved off as I was eventually going to free the oppressed from their regimes and this justification began paying dividends, as Shanghai was the first casualty in our peaceful conquest. Mao is already locked into a struggle for survival, and the city switching hands will all but guarantee another free city as the Germans storm in, and my plan is working flawlessly. Huh? This was a gut punch as no other cities were trying to rebel and join my empire, realizing I needed the next golden age. Since Adolf had been in consecutive ones since the start of the game and would surely come back down in the next era, so I super forward settled a city to prep for that eventuality to get great works and entertainment complexes set up. The ET lets you use bread and circuses to further reduce loyalty, but there is a major problem. We might lose this city, but as shocked as you all are, allow me to reassure you, dear viewer, that that is a good thing. You see, even if he takes the city, with his position, it would naturally rejoin my empire during a golden age, and with the buffs to production deity AI gets, we would get this city stronger than if we kept it in the first place, and with that in mind, I still needed that golden age, so I spam out wonders, high yield districts, as back to back golden ages are almost impossible to get. But I was here to make the impossible happen, and so I kept going, but the the problem with Germany having unusually high yields is that the era always ends as soon as possible, and so we had almost no time to do the impossible and fail to get the golden age we so desperately needed. This was no doubt a low moment as with Germany in a golden age of their own, I didn't even know if they could get a normal age. After all, they've been golden this entire time, and he would just have more time to increase his population and set up his empire against any peaceful conquests. With the realization that mods from shady websites generally aren't balanced, I was on the verge of potentially scrapping this challenge and playing with normal sieves instead. But something changed. I realized that I would only get stronger the longer the game goes on. After all, the more great works, the easier it would be, and even with all these yields, he has nothing to counter my unique ability. And with another golden age, sooner or later he'd enter a normal one, and so the wonder spam continued. During this self-actualization, I meet Mussolini, whose chin is painted like a cash register. Despite that genetic defect, he was the only person who could help me stop Hitler. And while I made overtures to the Italians, my wonders and districts began paying dividends. As great people were so impressed by my facilities, they flocked to my empire, but they weren't the only people looking to enter my sphere. Anyways, I decided I decided that while I'm cheating, I might as well reveal the map be- uh, Oh my goodness! I did not see that coming. 
But despite his massive empire, some would say that the larger the empire, the harder it is to keep together. And at that very moment, the embers of a Chinese revolt began flickering. Even without the Golden Age, my strategies beginning to work. I may be able to make Hitler see the light after all, and so it was all hands on I failed the challenge. It's personal now. I traded everything I owned, getting to negative 30 amenities thanks to bankruptcy at one point, but it was all for a singular cause. With all these great works amplified by bread and circuses, I was eventually able to take that Chinese stronghold 400 turns too late. And when the dominoes start falling, they start falling. One by one, more and more cities join the revolution. And with Hitler's war against Italy, he could couldn't deal with two revolts at once and my empire grew stronger and stronger. With all these cities, the era score came rolling in, securing the golden age for the next era. But as my conquests started slowing down, so did my computer. This late in the game and with the entire map revealed, it was to be expected, but even so we pressed on, splitting his empire in two after 346 real life hours and thus with all these cities taken. Adolf's power reduced, we secured our long sought after golden age. But so did Adolf. And so the conquest, which was already slowing down, began trickling before coming to a screeching halt. With the low population of the frontier and no great works in the cities, the loyalty was nowhere near strong enough. But why don't you move the great works, I hear you ask? Well, the game bugged out and decided to prevent me from opening the great works tab. <laughs> Well, the game bugged out and decided to prevent me from opening the Great Works tab. A gut punch after coming so far and so close to winning. And with that backbreaker, the loyalty began screeching to a halt just like my PC. And I was forced to concede defeat. I was furious at this turn of events, and while I could post this video with the hashtags L and Ratio, I needed redemption. And this Nazi LARP was blocking said redemption. This is when I hit the books. JFD's mod was removed from the Steam Workshop, but maybe there was another place where it was saved to. And after scouring the internet for what felt like days, two minutes later I had the mod downloaded and loaded up from a sketchy website that, surprisingly, didn't take control and start navigating to a website all but EDP would be disgusted by. And with potential blackmail averted, the game downloaded, mod installed, and all the civs normal instead of the broken mess that Germany was. I was back in mine comfort zone and it was time for revenge. I sped run the setup for brevity's sake and discovered Josef Stalin in the west and Hitler in the south blocking off expansion, but with my opportunities limited, I saw the free land up in the north. All this immense space would give me all the great works I'd ever need, and so I go block off the other civs with Manchester, guaranteeing all these cities, but what I didn't realize was this forward settle would anger a certain mustached man. Yosef launched his special military operation, and at this point I was on the back foot, but through sheer coincidence, I had an archer and warrior making rounds in the area and that was all I needed. While destroying thousands of Russians, something happened that turned this situation from bad to worse. I almost threw up at the sight I saw being a barbarian invasion. And as we all know, fighting the Soviets in a two front war is like bending over and opening wide in Ted Bundy's basement. Now ironically to everyone except civilization players, the unorganized tribesmen were the greater threat and thus reinforcements weren't coming south. But this warrior isn't moving. With his fortification and subsequent fornication of everything that tried a bitch, he held the line, whilst my ranged support eliminated the invaders. But news wasn't so good up north where the warrior was sent in retreat after getting pincered, and as they ran for their lives in desperation, he 
was trapped and will forever be remembered. As the funeral processions are ongoing, I get news that the Soviets were in full retreat, eventually forcing a peace with Stalin, but that still left the North in a precarious position. And with their newfound technological development, the Toas were about to make things worse. My only viable strategy was to engage in guerrilla warfare while I built up my forces. After a sufficient buildup, we counterattacked, destroying the Toa, and as we celebrate, we realize this crusade was no we're near over. There's only one way this would end. A head-on assault. We'll never expect it. And while we scattered the barbarians, it cost us another valiant soul. But his sacrifice was not in vain, as he secured the empire for the rest of time as the settling parties were making their way to claim the freed land. And with the empire stable, it was time to focus inwards. We needed a symbol to rally behind for our great work projects. And who better than Tumblr Sexy Man, a fine choice to make its return. What the average person had no info on was our need for a golden age, and the best way to do that is to convert nearby cities. And so with the dedication in hand, and with neither Germany nor the Soviets having an organized religion, it was go time. Two era score per conversion, it was getting trivial at this point to get golden ages. But just for good measure, we also constructed a monument, the Apadana, giving us four era score, and no doubt a large bevy of city-state allies in the near future. With the city-state allies, wonders, and religion spread, the golden age dawned upon us, something neither the Germans or Soviets could claim. But despite our advantage, I still was wasn't able to convert their cities, but after the gauntlet I went through today, I was expecting just that. And a bold move I already had planned, super forward settling a city using policies to keep it in check, and begun work on a theater square. But that square needed to be filled, and so it was back on the market for fart furry fetish stories. But despite our valiant sacrifice... It still wasn't falling, and a dark age was coming up, this is bad. If I lose this forward city, then we can kiss this sweet game goodbye like it was Warsaw in 1939. In our desperation, I was getting worried. And then worried as there was one turn left, and with no way for me to secure the normal age, this may spell the end for our second attempt. Until I somehow get 2,000 gold and buy a great admiral, giving us the era score for not only a normal age, but also the advantage over Stalin who was going dark. All great works were moved to Birmingham and Manchester, which was barely enough to push him over the edge. And through my careful plotting, I was finally seeing the fruit of my labor, but this was no time to sit on my laurels. I needed more great works and got to work selling coal, spamming wonders for a golden age since Germany isn't losing anything, despite us both being in a normal age. And the core cities for the USSR have massive populations, but as all this was ongoing, I realized none of North Korea's cities were losing any loyalty. Anyways, Leningrad rebelled. And with that, the snowball started gaining steam, city after city, all the grads, even USSR. Our gra they're just giving the title away these days. But I'm not complaining. Not with all the yields and error score I was drowning in. But as I took the city of Kiev, my suspicions were confirmed. Neither Moscow nor Vladivostok were falling, and Germany has been in the green this entire time. I needed a golden age. But with all the cities taken, wonder spammed and great works supplanted. That was already on the cards. And with luck, Germany was going dark, putting my arch nemesis in prime opportunity for conversion. But despite that, neither evil empire was falling, and I thought to myself, this was troubling. But that was before I filled out the frontier cities with both great works and entertainment complexes making a return. As I got those into production, I was relieved that not only Germany, but also the Vatican started collapsing. And it seemed like smooth sailing from here on, but as I was monitoring the loyalty screen, I realized Kim Jong-un is normal. 
and that he can't lose loyalty? I almost collapsed like a slave owner in 1865 at the realization and needed to get him out of the picture. Making allies with the human cash register and how communists view Mao Zedong before starting the First World War prematurely. While they were on that, I needed to mop up things back home, but the USSR was still not falling, and without Glasnost, I didn't know if they would even fall. But along came my savior the radio. With the great musicians, we were able to push them over the edge, and while that was getting started, so was Germany's collapse. To bring suffrage to a struggling peoples, I sent all my traders to increase their yields, and hopefully convert Berlin before too long until I realized I forgot to research suffrage. The communism may have also worked, but the goal of this video is to make the other soon fall apart. With newfound freedoms and democracy, the people decided to bar me from moving around their great works again, so I responded by bankrupting the entire nation again. With that, it was only a matter of when, not if, the two major settlements of the USSR would fall, leaving only a tiny city they had no hope of defending. And with the North finished, Berlin on its last legs, it was time to prep for an eastern expansion, but there was a problem. How was I going to take the east with such a slim pass? I took Nuremberg, which helped a little, sending in every trader to get it to grow, but the city-states were resolute in their independence, making my Switzerland LARP in the first game look belligerent in comparison. Even with the Golden Age, nothing was moving. Aside from Berlin, that is. But as the city fell, I won. Now, I know I should be happy, but... I wanted to conquer the world, and so I pressed on, wiping out the USSR, Cologne, but the thorn in my side was still Italy and the city-states. An impossible challenge for this type of map, and that isn't even considering North Korea proving impenetrable. And I thought to myself it was high time to get a military of my own since peace isn't going to work before realizing... Why am I doing this? I already won, made Hitler see the light, banishing him by train to the tundra to think about his actions. I was gonna send him to Nuremberg, but he cried out saying he'd rather go to Detroit and I didn't have the heart to go through with it. But why did I need to go beyond winning? Peaceful domination? Is a culture victory in half the world not enough? I came in to stop these bloodthirsty dictators, not realizing I actually became the bloodthirsty dictator. And after realizing the error of my ways, I decided to close the chapter on this video, but if you do want to see me massacre civilians, check out this video for a surprise.